I'm going to present a piece on old school mamas. Yeah. Now, um, I have these superhero uniforms on sale. There are some key parts that I need you to pay attention to on this t-shirt. First, the obvious. Although I'm an Omega man, it's black and gold. I pay respect. Res I'm going to take this off when I get home, though. Okay. Uh, there, are, there are some key pieces on this shirt that the old school mama has. If you'll notice in her left hand, there's a belt. <laughs> right. And around her neck, there's a cross to let you know she's covered. And, and, and that the house shoe that serves as both a shoe and a boomerang, if need be. Uh, these are on sale in the Christian Life Center. But this, listen, if in this poem, something that I say resonates with you, please uh, celebrate. Snap, clap, get up, run a lap, have fun. Okay? <laughs> Fellas, if I say something that reminds you of your mother or the mother of your children, celebrate that lady, especially on today. Children, if you're sitting next to your mother, scoot away. <laughs> this, this is, this, save yourself. Here we go. Old school mama. She don't tolerate no back talk or chatter. In fact, that's one of the quickest ways to get you smacked backwards. In fact, she's got one of the quickest hands on the planet. She won't blink or hesitate. And she wears that house coat like a cape. We call her mama. The superhero, always there to save the day. Hit mama on her hotline and help is on the way. Faster than a speeding bullet, daddy can say what he want to say. But when he show up, he trying to be cool. When mama show up, she don't play. Say, mama, ain't got to say something about nothing when something is wrong and you're trying to conceal it. But mama ain't got to say something about nothing when something is wrong because mama can feel it. When it's trouble in your way, you're on her heart all day. Mama wait for everybody to go to sleep, walk the floor all night and pray. And when she can't handle it alone, she get Big Mama on the phone. See, Mama knows how to pray, but Big Mama knows how to moan. Pray for you to have a safe trip and then pray till you get back home. And then she say, let me look at you. Make sure y'all right. Did you eat something? Where you been? Told me a long time ago. You ain't got no friends. I'm your friend. I'm your mama. Your doctor when you're sick. Your lawyer when you need. Gonna be down with you. The people that say that they down with you decide to leave. See, mama got agape love. No prizes. No awards. But if you need proof, she's got the scars. I'm talking about mama. Quick to console. Quick to give. Quick to listen. But get out of line. She's quick to discipline. Mama. Not like these new school mamas that don't say anything when the kid's is acting wild. But what of them old school mamas spat a rise, spoil a child? Think you grown? Mumble under your breath and say the wrong thing? She come across your face and put your bottom lip on your shoestrings. Mama. Not like these new school mamas that act like the authorities are a threat. But what of them old school mamas that'll give the child a number to CPS? See? New school mamas won't hit you anywhere but on your behind. Old school mamas will hit you anywhere with anything she can find. You might think that I'm exaggerating or embellishing the facts. Old school mama would have never let us wear our pants hanging off her behind like that. But these new school mamas' boyfriends just like children, and I guess they think it's cool. But thank God my mother was from the old school age. Hey. Amen. By a show of hands, anybody got an old school mama? Oh, good morning, word first. Amen. Would you all please stand with me in prayer? Amen. 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 Happy Mother's Day. Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, for all you've done thus far and all you were yet going to do. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, oh God, for so many things. But right now, God, we thank you for the gift of mothers. 
those that prayed for us, those that sit by our bedside, those that intervened for us, those that held us when we couldn't even hold ourselves. Thank you, oh God, for the gift of mothers. Thank you for those mothers that are in Word First this morning. We thank you, oh God, for all of them. In the name of Jesus, we just thank you for that gift. Father, now this is your time and this is your hour. Send your Holy Spirit, saturate this space and place that they may hear a word from you. For God, if we don't hear a word from you, Lord, what shall we do? Now take your manservant, O oh God, and hide me behind the cross. Take my mind and take my mouth and use it for your glory. Don't let anything in me or about me get in the way of what you want to say and do. Now, Lord, move in this space and have your way. In Jesus' name, and we all say amen. 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 Old school mamas. I like that. That, that. that poem just really resonated with me, especially when he said that she would come across your face and you'll find your lip on your shoestring. And it just reminds me of my wife. She constantly threatens my daughter. I'm going to punch you in the throat or something like that. Or, you know, she just don't play. I love that. There's a word from the Lord this morning. So if you have your Bibles, if you would please join me. We're going to be reading this morning from Matthew. Matthew, the book of Matthew. I'll be reading this morning from the New International Version of the Bible, Matthew 15. If you have it, would you please stand with me in reverence for our reading? Matthew 15, starting at verse 21 through 28. Matthew 15, 21 through 28. If you have it, say amen. If you don't, say wait for me. Amen. All right, we're all there then. Let's go. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to a region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus said, woman, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that very moment. May God add a blessing to the hearing of his word. Before you take your seat, would you shout the title to your neighbor? Real mamas just don't quit. Uh, just don't quit. You young people, for your sermon title, it would be, My Mama Rides Hard for Me. Ooh, mama rides hard for me. Real mamas just don't quit. This morning on Mother's Day, it's always that special time of year when you reflect on how good your mom has been. It's ironic, isn't it, that Mother's Day kind of coincides with all the graduations? Young people, take a moment. Let me just speak to you for a moment. Have you ever noticed and wondered why your mom cries at graduation? Have you ever wondered why mama hollers during graduation, why she cries and why she breaks down when she sees that baby walk across that stage? Because I really believe with all of my heart that it's some mama that sits in that stand, that sits in that pew, that sits in that seat and watches a child walk across that stage and all they're thinking about is all the things that you put them through. They think about all the lies and the manipulative things you said and done throughout your childhood years. They think about the days that they took you to the doctor. They think about the time that you were sick, the times when you didn't know how to take care of yourself. They thought about the times when they didn't know how they were going to make it. Only to look up and see you walk across that stage. And mama reflects back and thinks, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. 
There is something about an old school mama. There is something about a mama that just won't quit. Mama rides hard for you. Look at what it says here about mamas. Real mamas just won't quit asking questions that their children really don't always want to answer. Real mamas just won't quit wondering what their children are up to now and even if they never even ask. In a real sense, it says that real mamas are nosy, huh? Real mamas are always worrying about their children until, the, until their suspicions are either confirmed or laid. Real mamas are always getting in their children's business, no matter how old they are. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Real mamas are always walking that fine line between mothering and smothering. Amen. Any young people got children and your mama's always telling you how to raise your child? Ooh, V, you probably should have said amen. Real mamas are always fussing until their children get their act together. I think I just heard Anaya say amen. Real mamas are always, real mamas will just won't quit caring about how their children are really doing. Real mamas care. Real God-fearing mamas just won't quit praying for their children because they love them just that much. The best gift any mama can give her child is the gift of prayer. I used to remember waking up and seeing my grandmother at the foot of my bed praying for me. I'm a young man in college, and Brother Long can testify when you go to college and you pledge, I pledge Alpha, and he'll tell you that when you pledge, every day is a party. You don't know whether you're going to graduate or flunk out or whatever the case may be, but every night is a party. And my grandmother was so concerned that she would pray every night. Even when I wasn't at home, she was always on her knees, calling me and saying, I'm just praying for you. Real mamas pray. And I believe that's what we find right now in this particular text of Scripture. We find that this mama is praying for her child because a real mama prays. This woman, here she is, this mother, she is a Syrophoenician woman, a Canaanite woman, if you will. She has no business having a conversation with Jesus from the jump. But she finds herself in a space, in a place where her baby is going through the motions, where her baby is out of control. Mama don't know what to do. She don't know how to handle it. She does the only thing she can. She takes her concern to Jesus. There's some mama in the house that can testify and understand that my child is losing and acting like, like losing their ever in mind. My child seems to be out of control. I don't know what to do about it. I don't know how to handle it. But I know one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to pray about it until things get better. Real mamas pray. I love that church family. This sister, here she is, she is a Canaanite woman. We find herself, we find it right now in point number one. We'll just jump right into the sermon. Point number one, we find ourselves in an unusual setting. An unusual setting because here you see Jesus. He's just had an argument with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They just had a big argument over disciples washing their hands over disciples praying before they eat they bring jesus concerns about legalities of the law jesus says i'm not concerned with legalities of the law i'm more concerned with what comes out of their heart you focused on the wrong things you're worried about are they washing their hands are they eating the right things that's not your primary focus jesus says don't you know that the letter kill it but the spirit gives life they have a heated argument. Jesus dips. He rolls out and he makes his way to Tyre and Sidon. Why this is an unusual setting is because normally after Jesus ministers, after he has an argumentation or a debate with people, he needs to go back and recall and refresh himself. Usually he departs or retreats to a mountain. 
He says, look, I need to get away from y'all. Y'all need to get away from me. I'm going to go over here, and y'all stay right there. I'm going to go talk to my father. And that's a good word to somebody this morning. Maybe you feel toe up from the flow up. Maybe you feel that you were just stretched out and stretched in. And maybe you feel that you just can't hack it no more. Maybe you need to get away from some folks and go spend some time with your father. Ooh, that's a real word right there. You need to go spend some time with your God. So Jesus goes, instead of him going to a mountain, he intentionally goes to a region called Tyre and Sidon. On purpose, with purpose, he goes to a place that he wouldn't normally go. Normally he was with the Jews, but now he's going into a Gentile country on purpose. When he gets to this Gentile country, this woman sees him. She makes a beeline for Jesus. And she says, Lord, have mercy on me. Now, notice that I just told you that this is all the way out of order. There is no way and no business this firstborn Jewish boy should ever have any conversations openly with a Canaanite. And not just a Canaanite, a Canaanite woman. Because in this days, you got to understand the mores of the time that women were thought to be second class citizens. And with that being the case, he's not supposed to be talking to her. And likewise, she's not supposed to be talking to him. But this woman, she says, I don't care what the culture says. I don't care how it looks to everybody else. I need something from the Lord that only he can handle. I got a situation I can't handle by myself. I got a situation I don't know what I'm going to do. I need Jesus. Have you ever been there where you need the Lord to do something in your life? You don't care what nobody else says. You don't care what nobody else thinks. I'm going to church this morning, and I need a word from God. Amen. Have you ever just needed a word from him? And notice what this woman does. She doesn't go to God about her own situation. She goes on behalf of her baby. I love that a real mama knows how to sacrifice for the benefit of her child. A real mama, she gave up the bins and rolled in the Camry so that you could have better. A real mama didn't date him because he was bad for y'all. He was good for her, but bad for y'all. A real mama gave up Cancun and did a staycation so that you could have more. Real mamas know how to sacrifice. And here we find this mother, she sacrifices her pride and she goes and have a conversation with Jesus. It's an unusual setting. It's a bad situation because Jesus would have never went into a situation like this. But he went here with intention and on purpose. He went there for a specific time. And that ought to make somebody happy. That ought to make somebody shout to let you know that your God, our God, our Jesus will show up to you right when you need him most. Right where you are. The ideal circumstances may not be ideal at that moment, but Jesus still shows up right in your situation. Right when you need him most. Jesus shows up. And he's getting them, this, him and this woman begin the dialogue. And this woman says, Lord, have mercy on me. This is a sister. She's on the edges. She's on the outskirts. Nobody wants to be bothered with her. Nobody wants to be dealing with her because Jews and Gentiles didn't get along. We have no dealings one with the other. But Jesus shows up in her neck of the woods. And this sister says, hey, I don't know where you've been. I've heard about what you've done. All I know is that you showed up in my neck of the wood. And since you showed up on my side, I got the right to ask you for whatever I need. And that's what everybody need to be looking at this morning, that you serve a God that shows up in your space and in your place. And if he showed up, he's able, I tell you, to do some things for you that you can't do for yourself. Oh, this mother, this mother goes to Jesus, swallows her pride, looks past everybody that says she shouldn't be talking to him. And she goes to Jesus with her concern. I love that. I love that. There's nothing that can separate you from the love of a loving Jesus. 
He shows up right when you need him most. There are some people that don't want to be bothered with you. There are some cliques and some clubs, some crews that everybody don't want to have nothing to do with you. But then again, there are some people you're invited to everything. But for the rest of us, they're on the outskirts. Let you know that Jesus is intimately concerned about you. And mothers, you know that. That Jesus can concerned about you. But not only is it an unusual setting, but also would have been an unusual setting. Number two is there's an unlikely salutation. Here this woman is. Jesus has shown up in her neck of the woods. This woman steps up. It's an unusual setting. And now she gives Jesus an unlikely salutation. Notice what this mama does. This mama walks up to Jesus and she says, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. I know why you're not shouting, because you don't read Bible like I read Bible. She calls him Lord, son of David. That's his messianic title. Messianic title? What is that, Doc? I'm so glad you asked. Let me give it to you like this. His messianic title. They, the Jews knew that the Messiah was going to be coming down through the lineage of David, so they had been looking for him and looking for him. And now this woman, she had, it doesn't say she's went to church. It doesn't say she's heard the word. I don't know how she knew who he was, but here's what she calls him. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. The Jews wouldn't even call Jesus that. The disciples didn't even call Jesus that. But here it is, this unknown woman, this sovereign Phoenician woman, this Canaanite woman says, hey, I know exactly who you are. You ain't just somebody's baby boy. You are the Messiah, the son of David. This mama is real clear on who Jesus is. You know what? The Jews would play the dozen with Jesus and they would call him Joseph's boy, knowing that he wasn't Joseph from Joseph's lineage. Or they would call him Mary's boy. You don't call a Jewish boy by his mama's name. But when they were, they were digging, they were playing the dozens. Young people ask your grandmother and grandfather, what is the dozen when you get to church? They would play the dozens, you see. And even the disciples, they would say stuff like rabbi meaning master, or they would say Rabona, meaning master teacher. But they would never call him the son of David. This woman, this sister knows that she needs something from the Lord. She says, I'm very clear on who you are. You ain't just somebody's baby boy. You ain't just master or master teacher. No, you are the son of David. And since I know who you are, I also know what you're able to do. I know you can heal heavy hearts. I know you can cast out demons. I know you are a way maker. I know you are a heart fixer. I know you are a mind regulator. I know you're able. I need something from the Lord. And this sister walks up with an unusual salutation to the Lord. She don't step up, hey, what's up? She don't step up, hey, deuces. She steps up, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. It's not about my mother, not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And I'm praying for my child this morning. Jesus, my daughter, is demon-possessed. She's acting out of control. She's acting out of sorts. Have you ever had a child that's acting out of control? Have you ever had a child that's acting out of sorts? Have you ever had a child that you think they're losing their ever loving mind and you don't know how to handle them? That's where this mother is. This mother says, I don't know what's going on with my baby. I don't know how to fix this situation. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I love that church family. I love that this mother swallows her pride. This mother mobs up on Jesus and says, Jesus, I got a problem that I can't handle. 
That's why you see your moms always on the front, on the knees praying all the time. You've seen those big mamas that all they're going to do is say, I'm going to pray and I'm going to keep on praying. Because big mama knows and mamas know that in order for you to change a child, in order for you to get through to a child, it's not always yelling and fussing and cussing. It's not always that big belt in the closet. It's not always that extension card. It's sometimes you want to change your child. You want to reach your child. Then pray for your child you want something to change you need to get God involved and that's what this sister does she mobs up on Jesus and she prays but but, but not only do we look at it like this because it's an unusual salutation she knows who he is and since she knows who he is she knows what he's able to do but not only that, so since she knows what he's able to do, she says, Jesus, help me. And notice how Jesus responds. The Bible says that when she says, Lord, help me, Jesus didn't utter not one word. Your Bible says that she's praying, she's calling on the Lord, and Jesus doesn't answer. Wait a minute. Hold on. Pump your brakes. We at word first. We've been taught that, hey, Jesus is on the main line. You can call him up and tell him what you want. Line is never busy. Knock and the door will be open. Seek and you shall find. Ask and it will be given unto you. But all of a sudden, this woman is seeking something from God and Jesus doesn't respond who is this Jesus that doesn't respond we learned a few months ago that if you pray and you'll get the desires of your heart but Jesus doesn't answer have you ever been in that situation have you ever been in that space and place where you come to church Sunday after Sunday Bible study Wednesday after Wednesday Wednesday calling the pastor asking him to pray with you thinking that God is going to answer expecting an answer from God and all you get are crickets where are you God you know I need this you know my child is losing their mind you know I'm going through the going through and I need you to answer right now This woman prays, and he doesn't answer not one word. Not one word does he answer. What's going on with this type of Jesus? I love it, church family. I love it. Look at what happens. She calls on him. She tells him what she needs, and he keeps on doing what he was doing. It's an unusual setting. It's an unlikely salutation. But number three, it's an unfavorable situation. She asked him what's going on. She asked him, Lord, help me. He doesn't answer. And then in the midst of all of that, her daughter is suffering. Her daughter is grievously vexed. Your daughter, the fruit of your womb, your baby boo, your twin, your mini-me is suffering and going through And you take it to Jesus, and he won't even answer. Notice what happens. This girl, and I I love this part right here. She's out of control, and mama is stressed. And I'm so glad that they didn't tell us what her age was. She's not 13. She's not 17 or 16. Because that lets let you know when we talk about kids being demon-possessed and acting crazy, you don't necessarily have to be a child for that. There's some old kids in the sanctuary that act like they're losing their mind. Pastor Wesley, oh, he's, he's dead now. Rest, he's rested, God rest his soul. He told us one time in seminary, look here, son, ain't no fool like an old fool. Because there's some old parents that got some old kids that act like they losing their ever laughing mind. But mama still gets on her knees and prays. But look at what this woman does, and I love what this sister does. She's praying for her child. She's going after Jesus to get something. Jesus don't say anything to her. That's a bad situation. But not only that, the situation gets worse. Not only does Jesus not say something, but then them disciples, (laughs) them their disciples, I tell you, them disciples, them jokers, Lord, send her away. Because she keeps coming after us. 
after us? That woman ain't said one word to them disciples. That woman ain't asked them disciples nothing. But she keeps coming after us? Isn't it funny that everybody around you wants to get involved in a situation between you and Jesus? Everybody wants to get involved in your business when you got a concern that you want to take to Jesus. They might tell you, sit down, be quiet, stop that. It don't take. Preach my sermon. They always want to get involved in your business and always got something to say. The disciples make it even worse. But I notice, notice what they say. She keeps coming, present tense, after us. That word coming is actually in the Greek. It's in a present tense, repetitive format. That's right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's in the present tense, repetitive format. I Meaning she continues on coming. Stop it. Be quiet. He ain't hearing you. She keeps on hollering out and coming behind them. That's what praying mamas do. They just pray until things get better. They pray until you change, Tom. They pray until you act like you got some sense. They pray until they get a breakthrough in your situation. I love that. That's a real mama. She didn't give up. She didn't quit. She kept on praying. Praying for her child. And that's the advantage on Mother's Day this morning that we look at because real mamas just won't quit. They keep on praying. But if you notice, she keeps on praying. The disciples say, send her away. And then Jesus speaks. I love this part. Look, look at what he says. Jesus speaks. She keeps on coming after us. And Jesus decides, you know, the disciples that made this thing worse, let me just tell all of them, look, I was only sent to the household of Israel. But Jesus, I thought we all were included. I was only sent to a select few. I was only sent to a particular group. It is not right for me to stop what I'm doing to help somebody else. And then when he says that, she continues on. She continues on, I know who you are, I know what you're able to do, and since I know who you are and what you're able to do, I need you to do for me what you did for them over there. And that's why we have to testify, that's why we live our lives in such a way that you are living epistles so that somebody else can see what God has done in your life. Then when they fall on their knees, they have faith to endure until their change comes. The Bible says that, she, that the daughter was grievously vexed. Mama goes to Jesus, and she runs into some unexpected statements. It's an unusual setting. It's an unlikely salutation. It's an unfavorable situation. But number four, so we can get ready to leave and get up out of here, she says, we run into an unexpected statement. I'm only here for the lost sheep of Israel. I'm only here for this select group. I'm only here for this group of people. In other words, Jesus has set this up to test her faith. He set this up in such a way to see if you can get a bad report and still trust me. If you can hear no and still believe in me. Can you get a pink slip on your job and still trust me? Can the doctor give you a bad report and you still believe in me? Can you go through the divorce court and you still trust in God? Can you believe that the best is yet to come in spite of what it feels like right now? Can you trust me when things get bad? Can you trust me when I don't answer the way you thought I should? Can you trust me? We see some unexpected statements here. Jesus said, I was only sent to the house of, of Israel. Every day won't be easy. Every day won't be sunshine and rainbows. Every day you won't be able to just say, hey, I'm having a good day. There were going to be some times when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But in that moment and in that space and in that place, do you still trust me? Here's what this mother says. The text, shows, the text says that Jesus says I'm only showing up for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And the mother's reply, okay, I hear you, Jesus. And then she falls down and she worships him. I love that. Jesus says, I'm only sent for the lost sheep of Israel. She acknowledges that. I get it, Jesus. Okay. And she falls down and worships anyway. Oh, 
can you worship God in spite of? Can you trust God in the midst of? When the bottom of your life drops out, can you still trust God? When mama just calls home the glory, can you trust him? When the boyfriend says bye-bye and boo-boo says, I don't love you no more, do you trust him? Can you trust God when the worst happens? And like this mother, she wasn't deterred by what Jesus said. You showed, you, 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 she said, you, show, you, show, you showed up on my side of town, and since you showed up in my neck of the woods, I'm going to beseech you. I'm going to look for you. So she falls down, and she worships. I love that. Jesus shows up. He gives her a bad statement, and she worships anyway. She falls down, and she worships. Look at what happens. Your God can't look past a worshiper. Ooh, yo, Jesus sees a worshiper, and he wor still worships. He, he helps her. He sees this worshiper, and he stops, and then he says, it's not good to take the little children's food and give it to the dogs. Ooh. He, in essence, called the sister a dog. Canarion in the Greek, a house dog. He calls her and compares her to a house dog, Foxy Anaya. And um, when he does this, the woman doesn't even acknowledge it. I love that part because sometimes you hear some stuff, you, whatever you hear that's bad news, you shouldn't have let it affect your worship. You coming to church does not stop God from being God. You get mad at pastor and don't show up, God is still God. You get mad and don't want to pay your tithes, God is still God. She worships in the midst of everything. Now, 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 to be fair, my sisters, I love you. If that would have been some of my sisters and Jesus would have called you a dog, you'd have put your hand on your hip, your neck would have went to rolling, you'd have picked up that Miss Seely finger. Jesus, all you want to be, but uh, you pushing it now. You'd have thought of every pre-conversion word that you ever heard, and you'd have been ready to tell Jesus everything you was thinking at that point in time. But this sister, don't do that. You'd have went cookie from Empire on Jesus. Somebody say, how you know who cookie from Empire is? <laughs> DVR, DVR. But she don't go cookie from Empire on Jesus. She said, Jesus, true that. You're right about it. It ain't right to take the dog, the children's bread and give it to the dogs. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. One thing I know about crumbs, Jesus, I ain't got to have the whole loaf because everything that's in the loaf is in the crumbs. You ain't got to give me what she got. You ain't got to give me what he got. Just give me what I need. Any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Goodbye word first. May the Lord bless you mighty good. But can I ask you a question? Won't he deliver you? Won't he take care of you? Won't he provide for you? Won't he help you? Won't he make a way out of no way? Won't he give you joy and sorrow? Won't he give you hope for tomorrow? Won't he do it? Won't he, won't he, won't he do it? Happy Mother's Day.